The Ford GT began life as a concept car designed in anticipation of the automaker's centennial year and as part of its drive to showcase and revive its heritage names such as Mustang and Thunderbird. At the 2002 North American International Auto Show, 3, Ford unveiled a new GT40 concept car. Camillo Pardo, the then head of Ford's Living Legends Studio, is credited as the chief designer of the GT and worked under the guidance of Jay Mays. Carol Shelby, the original designer of the Shelby GT500, was brought in by Ford to help develop the GT, which included performance testing of the prototype car. While under development, the project was called Petunia. The GT is similar in outward appearance to the original GT40, but is bigger, wider, and most importantly 4 in 100 mm taller than the original's 40 in 100 cm overall height. As a result, a potential name for the car was the GT44. Citation needed, although the cars are visually related, structurally, there is no similarity between the modern GT and the 1960s GT40 that inspired it. After six weeks from the unveiling of the GT40 concept, Ford announced a limited production run of the car. Three pre-production cars were shown to the public in 2003 as part of Ford's centenary celebrations, and delivery of the production version, called simply the Ford GT, began in the fall of 2004. As the Ford GT was built as part of the company's 100th anniversary celebration, the left headlight cluster was designed to read 100.4. Naming Difficulties A British company, Safir Engineering, who built continuation GT40 cars in the 1980s, owned the GT40 trademark at that time. When production of the continuation cars ended, they sold the excess parts, tooling, design, and trademark to a small Ohio-based company called Safir GT40 Spares. This company licensed the use of the GT40 trademark to Ford for the initial 2002 show car. When Ford decided to put the GT40 concept to production stage, Negotiations between the two firms failed as Ford did not pay the 40 million U.S. dollars the owners of the name demanded. Thus, the production cars are simply called the GT-5-6. Production The GT was produced for the 2005 and 2006 model years. The car began assembly at Mayflower Vehicle Systems, MVS, in Norwalk, Ohio, and was painted and continued assembly at Celine Special Vehicles, SSB, facility in Troy, Michigan, through contract by Ford. The GT is powered by an engine built at Ford's Romeo Engine Plant in Romeo, Michigan. Installation of the engine and transmission along with seats and interior finishing was handled in the SVT building at Ford's Wixom, Michigan plant, 7. Of the 4,500 cars originally planned, approximately 100 were to be exported to Europe, starting in late 2005. An additional 200 cars were destined for sale in Canada. Production ended in September 2006 without reaching the planned production target. Approximately 550 cars were built in 2004, nearly 1,900 in 2005, and just over 1,600 in 2006 for a grand total of 4,038 cars.
The final 11 car bodies manufactured by Mayflower Vehicle Systems were disassembled, and the frames and body panels were sold as service parts. The Wixom assembly plant has stopped production of all models as of May 31, 2007. 8. Sales of the GT continued into 2007, from cars held in storage and in dealer inventories. When the Ford GT was first announced, the demand outpaced supply, and the cars initially sold for premium prices. The first private sale of Ford's new mid-engine sports car was completed on August 4, 2004, when former Microsoft executive John Shirley took delivery of his Midnight Blue 2005 Ford GT-10, Shirley earned the right to purchase the first production Ford GT, chassis number 10, at a charity auction at the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance auction after bidding over US dollar 557, 000, 11. A few other early cars sold for as much as a 100,000 US dollar premium over the suggested retail price of US dollar 139, 995, 12. Optional equipment available included a Macintosh sound system, racing stripes, painted brake calipers, and BBS forged alloy wheels adding $13,500 US dollars to the MSRP. 13. Performance and Engineering The center tunnel of the Ford GT is made from two aluminum extrusions friction stir welded to a bent aluminum sheet and houses the fuel tank. The Ford GT features many technologies unique at its time including a superplastic formed frame, aluminum body panels, roll-bonded floor panels, a friction stir welded center tunnel, covered by a magnesium center console, a ship-in-a-bottle gas tank, a capless fuel filler system, one-piece panels, and an aluminum engine cover with a one-piece carbon fiber inner panel. Brakes are four-piston aluminum Brembo calipers with cross-drilled and vented rotors at all four corners. When the rear canopy is opened, the rear suspension components and engine are visible. The 5.4L longitudinal rear-mounted modular V8 engine is an all-aluminum alloy engine with an Eaton 2300 Lisholm screw-type supercharger. It features a forged rotating assembly housed in an aluminum block designed specifically for the car. A dry sump oiling system is employed, allowing the engine to sit low in the car's frame. The DOHC four valves per cylinder heads are a revision of the 2000 Ford Mustang SVT Cobra R cylinder heads with slightly increased wall casting thickness in the exhaust port. The camshafts have unique specifications, with more lift and duration than those found in the Shelby GT500. Power output is 550 horsepower, 410 kilowatts, 558 PS, at 6,500 RPM and 500 LBFT, 678 Nm, of torque at 4,500 RPM. 14. A Ricardo 6 speed manual transmission is fitted, featuring a helical limited slip differential. Car and driver tested the GT in January 2004 and recorded a 0 to 60 miles per hour. 97 kilometers per hour, acceleration time of 3.3 seconds. The Ford GTX-1 is an aftermarket roadster iteration of the Ford GT introduced by the company at the 2005 SEMA show. The car was built by Mark Jarish, owner of Gennady Design Group from Green Bay, Wisconsin with assistance from Ford.
Kip Ewing, a development engineer who had been involved in the development of the GT and conceived the idea, supervised the project. The resulting chassis is 10% less stiff than the standard GT. The design was inspired by the open-top GT40, which was conceived in the 1960s. The car had a modified engine cover, modified doors, with roof portions removed, and a central removal roof bar. Two roof pieces could be installed and removed when the roof bar was installed making the car a T-top. A canvas roof panel would be installed when the roof bar was removed. The car had headrests inspired from the Porsche Carrera GT. The car received a positive response at the show and customers urged Ford to build this version of the GT, but the end of the production of the GT in the forthcoming year meant that it would be expensive to produce another limited variant of the car. The GTX-1 was offered as a kit by the body shop adding $38,000 to the price of a standard Ford GT. The involvement of Ford in the process meant that the warranty and other obligations on the car were unaltered, 18. A total of 100 orders for the GTX-1 were received and completed over a two-year planned production period, these including the exact copies of the SEMA show car. Other modifications on the GTX-1 included race seats, a customized interior, new Willwood brakes, a hidden rear bumper and a maximum power increase to 700 horsepower, 522 kilowatts, 710 PS. The GTX-1 was featured in various automotive publications along with several reviews. 19.